reading, understanding, hearing to his righteous scripture, that you may be the hands, the heart, and the feet, love and action of Jesus. Amen. And because of that, because this lost sheep has come home, I want to share with you this song. I know the Trinity folk know it. My name is Victory. <laughs> Join us.
Oh, come on, let the church say amen in the house today. Oh, we're praising God, we're praising God. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles as we start this new sermon series for the month of April. Uh, four sermon series that we, that the Lord has led me to entitle uh, The Resurrection of Hope. And we're, because it is Palm Sunday, we're, a, we're turning our attention to, uh, to John's rendition of the triumphal entry. You will find that in your Bibles in chapter 12. I'm focusing our attention on tw verses 12 through 19. So chapter 12, verses 12 through 19 in your Bibles. I'm going to read it to you this morning in the... Uh, let me read it to you in the King James Version. And then we want to hone our attention on uh, a little bit of the study as we move towards our theme. We'll, let me just read this from the King James. John chapter 12, beginning with verse number 12. It says, On the next day, much people that came that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees, and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had, heard, when he had found a young colt, sat thereupon, as it is written. And as it was written in the Old Testament prophecies, it said, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt, these things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that were with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear witness. For this cause the people also met him, for that they had heard he had done this great miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. Now for today's time together, church family, I want to, I want to back into this uh, triumphal entry, this Palm Sunday celebration, by focusing in on those, that, that, eight, that verse that says, 17, that says that, the people, therefore, that were with him, <clears throat> excuse me, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, out of his grave, and raised him up from the dead, bear record. John uniquely, John uniquely shares the episode and writes and connects the, the resurrection of Lazarus, not only to the, uh, to the Pharisees and the religious leaders, seeking to kill both Jesus and Lazarus, but to the triumphal entry of in Jerusalem, the Palm Sunday triumphal entry that we just read to you, John's version of it. You will remember if you look back, flip back just a chapter. <clears throat> I've got two life lessons to share today, but if you flip back just a chapter to chapter 11, that Martha and Mary and Martha had sent, uh, sent someone out to Jesus to let him know that Lazarus, Lazarus was sick unto death. And if you recall that Jesus is telling his disciples, uh, let's go to Lazarus because he sleepeth. And the disciples didn't understand what that meant. They said, well, if he's resting, if he's sleeping, then he will rise again, Jesus. And Jesus said, no, let me make it very plain to you that he has died. And we're going to the family and to raise him up again. And there's an interesting passage there as Jesus is approaching. He waits two days. Lazarus has already been, the journey took about a day to get there to, from Bethany to Bethany, from Bethany to Jesus, and Jesus back to Bethany. He waits two days so that by the time Jesus gets, is approaching the family of Mary and Martha, Martha and Mary, that it has been four days that Lazarus has been dead. Now there's an interesting dialogue that takes place as Jesus is approaching uh, Bethany, approaching the house of, of Mary and Martha, that says that Martha came out. Let me, let me pick up 
with chapter 11, verses 21 through 29, because that's power filled. You, you, you're going to want to read this. <clears throat> I'll read it to you. In that 21st verse, flip my pages back if I can, it picks up the storyline. It says now, get my pages are sticking together there. It picks up the storyline. It says, now, then said Martha unto Jesus. Listen to this. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask God, God will give it thee. And Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Let me give you this first life lesson if you're jotting down. When unexpected and overwhelming trials threaten your faith and your hope. Trust in Jesus. Trust in him to resurrect and to renew your spirit and to give you new life in him. Be grateful today. Let me, let me read that for you twice. When, an un, when unexpected and overwhelming trials threaten your faith and your hope, trust in Jesus to resurrect and renew your spirit and to give you new life in him. Trust in him and be grateful today. Church family, let me unpack this a little bit. There's something powerful that's taking place in this one, this one encounter here that's leading up to the resurrection that, of, of Lazarus by Jesus. It, it reveals so much of what we might even be going through somewhat today as we deal with, uh, with the very virus that's worldwide, this pandemic. It has to do with some of the stages of what happens when we drift in, we drift towards a, a state of feeling hopeless and help, helpless, not able to control our circumstances, our environment around us, and how that can impact us from a psychological standpoint. Martha comes out to Jesus, and Jesus has been, you know, it's been four days now, and, and Lazarus has been dead. And the statement she makes to him, and she echoes it, Mary echoes it, when, he, when she comes and approaches Jesus later, gives us some insight into some of how we, how, how we deal with unexpected and somewhat overwhelming circumstances. Let me, I jotted down five Ds, five words that begin with D that, that made me think of the, the concept that we somehow drift to if we're not careful. When you look at, when you pull up a seat beside Martha, and she invites us to do this, you, you, you find yourself experiencing with her her sense of doubt and it plays itself in the fear she she had lost her brother and the circumstances have been overwhelming physicians were not able to to heal or find a, a, a formula that could solve the predicament that he was in physically uh, it's a family member loss it's a it's a loved one that's close to it. it's her brother and she's dealing with this and 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 in this moment our humanity has a tendency to want to doubt doubt ourselves, doubt the environment that we're in, doubt the people that are around us. And, and it begins to, our faith can begin to get a little bit shaky if we're not careful. It's a, Martha was going through that moment and, and doubt has this interesting way of, of, of cascading, of growing and expanding to the point that it leads to disappointment in the very people that we might have trusted, the very people that have cared for us, the very circumstances that we've been in, wondering whether or not <clears throat> we're able to handle our situations, wondering whether or not we have the intellectual capacity to deal with the things that are happening around us, wondering whether or not our emotional makeup is strong enough to be able to gird, gird up underneath of the weight of the things that are going on in our circumstances and our life situation there. And it leads to a sense of disappointment. Doubt can lead to disappointment, the second D in our formula. And disappointment has this interesting way of leading us into a depressed state if we're not careful. <clears throat> it will make us 
It will make us turn in on ourselves. It will make us uh, 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 regress emotionally, if you will. It will make us not look at, world from, look at the world and our circumstances from the eyes of hope, but the eyes of helplessness and the eyes of hopelessness. Uh, we, have to, we have to gird up. Martha was, was walking through this journey, and she stepped through doubt, and she has stepped through disappointment, and she has stepped through a state of feeling depressed. And you could hear it in her statement as she was talking to Jesus. For she said to Jesus, if, if you had only been here, Master, if, Lord, if you had only been on the scene and been able to put your hands on my brother, been only able to speak a word in his presence, then surely he would not have died. She didn't recognize, she didn't understand fully that there standing in front of her was indeed the God-man, very God and very man. Even though he had performed miracles before, he'd raised a couple of folk from the dead. She still, her, 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 her doubt, her disappointment, and her depressed state had minimized her vision and her faith walk to the point that she could only see success and victory if Jesus had been on the scene. And it has a way of, if we allow it to escalate, to, to lead us toward a, a place of detachment, a place of wanting to be isolated. Uh, we feel like we just don't want to be around people. We're social beings. We're, we're relational people. But sometimes doubt and disappointment and depression can, can loop us back into a situation where we feel like that we just want to be alone. We just want to be detached, the fourth D in our, in our formula. And if we're not careful, that, that sense of detachment can grow to the point that it begins to hit the final D, which is a distorted view, distortion. It changes our outlook and our vision on life and on people and on the world that we live in, from doubt to disappointment to depression to detachment to distortion. And she echoed that even in a one short sentence to Jesus, if you, Lord, if you had only been here, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But the beauty of calling out to Jesus, the beauty of reaching out to Jesus, even with our doubts and our, and our disappointment and our depression and our detachment and our distortion, is that Jesus is the answer to all of that. He has a, a way of not only speaking into that, but making his presence powerfully known. He, he's able to move us out of that state of hopelessness into the powerful state of hope in him, in Christ Jesus. And he speaks a word that is powerful as you look at these scriptures. And it, 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 it enlightens us, it enlivens us, it gives us hope in the journey. He says, I am the resurrection. Matter of fact, he uses a term that the Hebrew, Hebrew students, the Old Testament scholars would understand uh, clearly when he says, he uses Yahwehistic terminology. Allow me to go there for a moment. He says, I am the I am. You know, Moses would hear that on the burning bush. Who should I say sent you? I am that I am sent you. Well, here comes Jesus later using the term and attaching on it the, the, the descriptive. He says, I am the I am. I'm very God and very man. From the beginning, uncreated being, yet very God in your presence in the flesh, I am the I am who is the resurrection and the life. And immediately as Jesus spoke into that, he moved her, he spoke faith into her doubt. He, he spoke hope into her disappointment. He, has, he spoke praise in her to the, into her depression. He spoke compassion into her detachment. And he spoke kingdom vision into her distortion. He moved her. He, he began the process of moving her out of her human state of feeling hope, of hopelessness and helplessness and launching her, beginning the process of launching her into the state of kingdom hopefulness and victory and success and peace and joy. He says, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he did all that, he said all that to Martha, and he repeated that message in Mary's presence to Mary. He says, when she says, if you had been here, he says, show me where he is. Take me to where he is. And, and when he performs a miracle and he says, Lazarus come forth out of the tomb, and Lazarus after four days being dead gets up and walks out of the tomb, he not only has pronounced the word 
that he indeed is the personification of resurrection and life, eternal life with God through Christ Jesus. He now demonstrates that he has the power. The one who created the universe now has the power not only, uh, uh, not only over sin and sickness, but over very death, death itself and the power to give life and life eternal, life everlasting. The storyline tells us that, that there were crowds around there that were watching. And they got excited about this Lazarus. And excited about Jesus because he had raised him from the dead. And they began to follow him. Before we move on to the Palm Sunday morning, the Palm Sunday of triumphal entry, the question on the table that I think that the Word of God is asking you and me right where we are today. Is there any, any part of that experience that Martha and Mary have gone, through, have gone through that you can relate to today? Is there any, as you're dealing with uh, the, this imposed quarantine, this sheltering in moment, uh, that is causing, that is surfacing any type of sense of doubt in your journey? Is the doubt trying to permeate and, and infiltrate your thinking and move you towards disappointment? Uh, like you feel like that you're not fulfilling your purpose in life or, or that things around you are not happening like you believe they should. Are you, are you going through any state of feeling depressed in this? It's a human component to drift down this road and, 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 and move toward detachment and distortion. If you're experiencing any of that today, Jesus comes along with some good news and, and allows me to share it in his word with you that the, Jesus is not the author of fear. God did not give you the spirit of fear. That's not what he does. And, 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 and if you're feeling any doubt in your journey, uh, he, he invites us to remember who you belong to. Remember who you are in Christ Jesus. And remember that he indeed is not only the author of life, but he's the resurrection, the source of resurrection. He, is, he, he says, I am the I am who is the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in me, indeed, you shall not die, but you shall experience. You shall not have eternal death, but you shall experience life everlasting with Christ Jesus. And you are a new creature. Oh, I need to take a moment here. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Doesn't mean you never experience doubt. Doesn't mean you never experience disappointment. Doesn't mean you never know what it feels like to be depressed. Doesn't mean that you don't know what detachment feels like or distortion in view feels like. But it means that when, when you come to Jesus as a new creature in Christ Jesus, that indeed he has this powerful way of resurrecting your hope and giving you assurance in faith to walk this journey knowing that you are a child of the king and that you have victory in Christ Jesus. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll take your hopelessness and turn it into hope. He'll take your helplessness and turn it into sure enough help. He'll, 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 take, your, he'll take your depression and turn it into praise. If you just come to him, lean on him, trust in him, and believe that he's able to fulfill all his promises. He will renew your spirits and give you new life. Be grateful today. Well, the storyline then leads us to the Palm Sunday. The Palm Sunday episode is recorded in chapter number 12 that we, we read a little bit to you there from verses 12 through 19 because John uniquely tells us as we backed into the story that indeed that so many people, the disciples and so many had come because they had heard about the signs and wonders that Jesus had performed. Many had come because they heard about, they wanted to see not only this miracle working uh, uh, Messiah, this miracle working rabbi, this miracle working prophet, priest, and king, but they wanted to see this Lazarus who had been raised from the dead. And so the storyline, as we read early on, tells us that, that, as, that as the day began and, and they were in the process of, uh, of riding in on the colt, on the ass, the colt of the ass, into Jerusalem, that the crowds were excited. 
The crowds were spreading palms. The crowds, crowds were spreading their garments on the road. <clears throat> and they were excited to see Jesus, that they had heard about this Jesus who had given sight to the blind, this Jesus who had calmed the raging seas, this Jesus who had given hearing to those who hadn't heard before, this Jesus who made those who had never walked before stand up, leap up, and go walking, this Jesus who had the ability to cast out demons, this Jesus who now had risen, who given life to the dead and resurrected the dead, this Lazarus. They wanted to see this Jesus. I jotted down a second life lesson if you're, if you're jotting down as we take a quick close look at this last few verses. It says, when Jesus restores your hope and expands your kingdom vision, walk faithfully and praise him passionately in his word and in his fellowship today. Let me say that twice if you're listening out there, church family. When Jesus restores your hope and he expands your kingdom vision. Walk faithfully and praise him passionately in his word and his fellowship today. On that next day, people were coming to the feast. They heard that Jesus was coming from Jerusalem. They took branches of palm trees. They went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. You'll notice that even though their faith was not perfected, even though their understanding was not to the highest level, they, uh, many writers had indicated they believed that this crowd who was many of which who would later deny him, who would, who would scorn him, who would indeed shout crucify to him, were excited about the miracles that he had worked. They had heard about the Lazarus, and Lazarus was in their presence, and they wanted to see this man that had been resurrected from the dead. They wanted to see this Jesus who had done so much, so many powerful works, and they spoken like no man had ever spoken before. But somehow in their mindset, many believed that they were thinking that this might be the coming king who would free them from Roman tyranny and Roman rule and the oppression of being under uh, this pagan, pagan rule and reign and somehow just usher in uh, this, 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 this kingdom rule for Jerusalem and, and freedom and, and under the kingship of the coming Messiah. They didn't recognize that he was coming in riding on a coat in the, demonstrating his humility. He didn't come riding in with a, with, 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 with a, you know, with a parade of people around him didn't come riding in with a, a chariots and horses, you know, and great, great, great cavalcade, if you will. He wasn't, he wasn't marching in with this great, uh, this, this great throng of people. Uh, uh, they, were, they were tossing their garments down, but it wasn't like a king, it wasn't like a, a royal king coming in. It was like a humble king coming in. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. But they threw their garments down. They shouted, Hosea, blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name. But he was coming to give his life for their sins. And while they're shouting, the, the opposition who had planned now that it was time to kill him and kill Lazarus because he was doing things that only God could do. Uh, and he had made statements uh, equating himself with, with God by saying, I am that I am. He was saying, I am divinity. I am very God and yet very man. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and all the religious elite just couldn't stand that. And so they, uh, they, they, they in, in Luke's rendition, uh, the Pharisees cry out to Jesus and say, you, you need to stop your disciples from praising you. You need to stop these people from praising you. Because they are building you up. And Jesus says to them, if they hold their praise, then the rocks will cry out. If the people don't lift up their voices shouting, Hosanna, King, coming King, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord, then God will absolutely, God the Father will absolutely put vocal cords on a stone. You know, he put lips on a rock, and the rocks will cry out praise unto him. For indeed, standing in front of you is not just the King of, king of Israel, but the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Not just riding in in front of you is, is, is the one who's coming in uh, representing uh, kingship to Israel, 
but the one who is the creator of the universe. All things were created by him and for him and sustained in and through him. He's now tabernacling among you. And I, even though opposition might come, church family, while you're going through your, your time, your, your time maybe of wrestling, your, your time of unease, your time of unsettlement, Jesus has a powerful word for you. He has a powerful word of, of resurrection. He has a powerful word of renewal that can speak right to where you are and lift you up out of whatever state you might be in and give you joy and give you peace. And in the process, when, you, when the Lord restores that hope, he has a way of also expanding your vision, your kingdom vision, so that you're not looking at your circumstances and looking at, looking at them as if they have an overwhelming impact on your life and measuring your ability to function in the midst of your circumstances. We can't control this virus. There's nothing we can do to get our arms around it and how it spreads. But I came by to tell you this morning that all of this God is in, God has, has his arms around. He's, he's sovereign, he's in control. And somehow in the midst of this, God is able, he's promised he's able to make all of these things work together for the good and for his glory and for those who are followers and believers and are called according to his purpose. So God is about to do something powerful even in the midst of a time of difficulty. God is about to do something magnificent even in a time when it feels like uncertainty is all around us. God is about to do something fabulous even when it feels like the world all around you is, is shut up and shut in and worried and, and anxious and, and not knowing where to turn because it's a perfect time to be able to share the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ with somebody Reach out and touch somebody. Reach out and call somebody. Reach out and give a virtual hug to somebody and tell them about Jesus. Let your praises ring out loud in the midst of this time of, of, of uncertainty and watch God do a powerful and mighty thing in and through your praise. Because I came by to tell you today, just like Jesus told the Pharisees, if, if we don't lift our voices in praise, then he'll put, he'll put lips on a stone, he'll put vocal cords on a boulder, and somehow the world, everything created, will shout the praise of God Almighty to Jesus, to Jesus Christ, to God Almighty, to God Almighty. He's going to be praised. Is, is, is he worthy of your praise today, church? Come on, right where you are today. If he's worthy of your praise today, it's worthy. Of, take a few seconds and just give God some praise right where you are because you know that you're breathing. You know that you're, you're living. You know that you're healthy. You know that you're hopeful. You know that this life cannot overwhelm you because you are conquerors. Matter of fact, by, Paul says you're more than conquerors in this journey and nothing can or will defeat you. So, when he restores your hope, he will absolutely expand your vision. You will see things through the eyes, uh, through kingdom eyes. Things that might look like they're overwhelming become opportunities for ministry and for service. Things that might feel like they're hopeless become opportunities to spend time intimately with the Lord in his word and in prayer. And watch how he builds you up in faith, strengthens you up emotionally, expands your thinking intellectually, and enlarges your spirit to serve and to reach and to touch others. I found myself thinking about a song as I close out my time with you here. It's one of those old hymns that uh, it's one of those William Bradbury hymns from back in the day. You know it so very well. And it has such powerful meaning when you kind of speak it out loud. The writer writes, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. <clears throat> In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. 
when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness. Oh, somebody's praising now. Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. I can hear you out there in the audience right now. You say, get to the chorus, preacher. Get to the chorus so I can join in and sing with you. Here he comes. William Bradbury says, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking, sinking, sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Let me say that one more time as you're singing along with me. I can, I can hear you. I can hear you singing it in the background. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Our two life lessons for the day. When unexpected and overwhelming trials threaten your faith and your hope, trust in Jesus to resurrect and renew your spirit and to give you new life in him. Be grateful today. Second life lesson, when Jesus restores your hope and expands your kingdom vision, walk faithfully and praise him passionately in his word and in his fellowship today. Father God, I want to thank you for blessing us with this time together in your word, allowing us to spend this, these just few moments Lifting from this Palm Sunday pages, your life lessons for us today and in the days ahead. You've spoken to our heart, Lord. Help us to receive it and to apply it to our daily walk and journey. Giving you thanks, giving you glory and honor and praise. Bless us as we, as we continue to minister in your name, Lord. Bless us as we continue to love in the name of Christ. And help us to be a blessing in someone's life and share the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. All these prayers and these praises of thanksgiving we lift up to you in Jesus' holy name. And wherever you are, God's people, all of us, let's say together, amen and amen. As we, begin, as we prepare to have the first lady to come back up, to lead us into our communion worship service with a song. If you take your, get your elements prepared now, the bread and, and the juice, we will prepare to come together as family. If the Lord has touched your heart and you've given your life to Jesus, send us a note, let us know so we can be praying with you. Send it through Facebook, send it through on our website, however you send it. And if you're in the area and you're seeking a church home, shoot us a note so that we can get back in touch with you and we can be praying with you. May God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you, First Lady. Amen. We're going to take a moment somehow my... Uh iPhone is disconnected, so we are going to reconnect as we will usher in communion time. How many of you know that God knows your name, that he walks with you and he talks with you, and he tells you that he is your own? Well, I want you to take a moment and to meditate on those words as we go into communion and sing. Sing along with me. He knows my name. <clears throat> Bear with me, please.
calls my name. <clears throat> he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my with me and oh how he talks with me yes and oh how he tells me that I am his own you Your power 
is within me. No giant can defeat me. You Cause your power is within me No giant can defeat me You hold my hand 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 And you As we now prepare for our online communion together as family. Take one for me and for you. Praying that you have uh, your crackers or your bread available. As you take those and prepare those. First Lady and I will join with you together in our time of communion. The Word of God shares with us that Jesus gathered in an upper room during the Passion Week with his closest disciples. And there, he was sharing the Passover meal, <clears throat> celebrating the freedom and the deliverance of Israel from Egyptian bondage. He powerfully symbolizes and symbolized to them that he was a source of freedom from spiritual bondage, spiritual capti captivity. Anyone who believed in him would be redeemed, bought out of slavery, never to be sold back into it again. And there the text tells us that he took the bread and he blessed it. He said, this is my body which is given for you. Likewise, he took the cup and having blessed it, he said, this represents the blood of the new covenant which is shed for the remission of your sins. So as we join together this morning, if you'll take your bread, and hands or your crackers. And before we share together, let's just bless this. Father God, we thank you so very much for blessing us with this opportunity to have communion together. 
even extended and even electronic communion, Lord, is family gathering, family connecting, family touching in agreement and thanking you and praising you, giving you glory for who you are, all you've done, and that you would love us so very much that you would give your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that we who believe in him shall not, will not, cannot perish, but will have life everlasting with you. So, Father God, bless the bread and bless the cup that we're about to receive. Set it apart for us and set us apart for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. So the word of God says he took the bread and having blessed it, he said, this is the body. This represents my body, which is given for you, broken for you. Let's eat together, church family. Likewise, the word of God said that he took the cup, having blessed it. He said, this represents my blood, the shed blood for the new covenant, for the remission of all your sins. Let's drink together, church. After they had shared the Passover meal, the scripture shared with us that they went out toward the Mount of Olives singing a hymn together, rejoicing, praising God for who he is and for all that he has done. My prayers for you as we, we conclude our time together in worship is that the Lord has made his presence known in a powerful way to you today, moving on your heart, moving in your mind, moving in your spirit, giving you hope, even in the moments when you might feel a tinge of hopelessness, knowing that you have his help, even when you might have a sense of helplessness. He's a great God, church family. He's a mighty God. And you and I, we are his children, new creatures in Christ Jesus. So have a fabulous week in Jesus Christ. Reach out and touch somebody in the precious name of Jesus. Share the good news with somebody. Uh, as, as you get a chance to in the precious name of Jesus spend time when you get up in your devotional time in prayer and in praise in study and in even distant fellowship it is passion week and until we meet again we are praying for you let us hear for you, if you hear from you if you have any prayers any anything we need to be lifting up in prayer for you we love you we're your family Trinity Baptist Community Church Bishop Love and First Lady Karen Love Keep us in your prayers, please. So with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, and our hearts humbled before the living God, as we assume an attitude of prayer, and we lift our hands to him in praise. Now unto him, who is able to keep you and me from falling, and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let all God's people say amen and amen. And God bless you and God keep you. Have a fabulous week in Christ Jesus.